right, guys, let's dive into it. We started this build with a 2021 Snake Venom Road Glide Special, and it got one of our 130 motors we do. We got a bunch of combinations. We picked 130 for this customer, S&S &S cylinders, CP Carrillo custom domed pistons with a pair of the Moonshine plus 1.5 over valves from Frankenstein. Brand new head out. It's 155 upwards of horsepower. If we dive into the details of this bike, we pull out the whole case, we split the motor down. We took out the, the factory four and a half inch flywheel and we stuck in an s, &S flywheel bottoms and we paired it with the Carrillo rods. Here's a link right here to the video, click it, it's on the screen. That will show you our comparison of several of the different flywheels we run, all right? We stuck that guy in this bike with the Carrillo rods and it got our heads. When we do the Frankenstein heads on the smaller valves, it's still the round port. You guys have probably seen a couple of videos we've done maybe on our live stream. There's more to come on the new Frankenstein heads. We're excited about them. Brand new big intake manifold that's been produced and we'll roll out the intake manifold into different combination of these heads as we grow. On this setup, we're running a stealth air cleaner from s, s We like them, they run very good. This has the plus one over element in there, which is an option from s s It'll flow all the air you need. We get really, really good results. And we love the carbon fiber teardrop cover. If you notice on this guy, the ring is powder coated black. That is custom. That's something we do for our customers on our builds when we do it. s s only offers it in bare aluminum really really trick setup on an all blacked out special or any all blacked out harley davidson we finished this guy off with a pair of two and one D, D exhaust the D, D hits good it's torquey it looks good it sounds good on this guy we got the big bore baffle now let's talk about the rear suspension on this guy these are a pair of Olean's 13 inch shock they are the hd 159s they are what they call their DRL, which is for a divided piston shock, rebound, and you have a length adjustment. The difference between a DRL Olean's and one of their higher end, their top shelf shocks, which would be the remote reservoirs we run a lot, we run the 357s and the 044s, depending on where we mount the reservoir. And we went over that in the first performance bagger video we did. So if you wanna see that, go to the link, boom, it's right here. On the screen, click that guy, it'll take you back to the video we did, the orange bike, which we dive into those shocks. On this setup, you do not have the compression. The remote reservoir shocks have the external compression, which is on top of the remote reservoir. Since this shock does not have the remote reservoir, it has an external rebound, which is at the bottom of the shock. The rebound, what it does is when you turn it to the right, it pushes a needle into a jet and restricts the flow. That is gonna be more aggressive. That is more race, corners. You're really pushing the bike to its limits. When you turn the bottom left, it takes the rebound and it takes that jet and it opens it up because the needle gets pulled out of the jet. It allows more oil to flow through the jet, which is, it's gonna be a more compliant feel, more touring, more relaxed setup. If you're too up riding, you're gonna probably wanna dial it down. When Olean's ships these shocks to us, that sitting is usually 20 clicks from all the way maxed out. Okay, so what they do is they put it in until it's the, the needle's all the way in the jet, 20 clicks back, that's where they set them from the factory. That's typically when you get a build from us where we set it as well. It's a good starting point. It's kind of in the middle between the, the aggressive and the compliant feel for your Turing guy. Real nice shock. Also, you will notice on the bottom of this shock, there's a blue nut. The blue nut allows you to lengthen the shock. You have about five millimeters to play with there to get a little bit more length. Five millimeters is about, it's just shy of a quarter of an inch, so it's 0.2 of an inch to play with on the bottom of the shock, just to get a little bit more ride height out of your shock. Now let's talk about the rear setup, what we do for the axles of anything we're doing that's 145 plus horsepower. Okay, what happens, like we talked about in the other video before, is when you have 140 plus horsepower and you're hammering on this bike, the rear left of your axle, which is on the pulley side or it's on your chain side, depending on your setup, will actually pull forward. You have enough torque where the cam design from Harley is a great setup. It's easy 
to fine tune. It's easy to adjust your belt from the factory. It was never designed to handle 145 plus horsepower. So when you hammer on it over and over, your rear axle gets tweaked, it twists it a little bit to one side. So to combat that, we've worked with a couple different axle adjusters. We landed with Krauss. We do a lot of stuff with Krauss because they work well with us. They take our input, we can fine tune the product. On these guys, there's a double lock on them. So on the rear of the shock, you have one Allen that you're gonna turn and it's gonna pull your axle back. And then you have a lock nut on it when it's set. But if you notice on the bottom, right below your axle, there's ticks, all right? So what do we have here? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's 10 clicks on it. So line that side up, line your other side up, count them, make sure it's square. You're good to go on your rear axle. Then you lock down the nut on the back. After you do that, you come around to the front side, you're gonna push in the front lock, you're gonna snug that guy up with the Allen, and then you're gonna lock down the front nut, and that's just gonna make sure there's no movement in there. It holds it real tight. If you just lock the back and not the front, you could have a little movement up and down in there. This secures it. Just make sure everything's good because this axle adjuster is aluminum. The axle supplied from Krauss in their Vector One axle adjuster axle kit is a hollow axle. It's really nice. It's a double nut setup on it. So you do have to torque both sides of it. We torque them and then we torque them again to make sure everything's good. And of course you have a C-clip for safety on your rear end, make sure nothing goes wrong there. Really nice looking setup. Another advantage over this axle adjuster is from some of the other ones we've dealt with and other ones available in the market is the axle adjuster is actually locked into the rear shock mount. So when you buy this and install it, there is a spacer kit. You are spacing out your shocks a little bit, but it locks in the rear axle adjuster so there's no movement on that guy. It's important. It's, it's nice. It's easy. It's a very clean setup. Highly recommended for you guys. Now, if we move to the rear of this bike, you can see hung underneath this, if we can look at it underneath the exhaust here, we have a Behringer Aerotech radial caliper. It's a four piston brake caliper. It's mounted on a cross radial rear brake mount and it has ARP hardware holding it all together. Tucked up underneath there is a non-floating oversized rotor. It's a 300 millimeter rear rotor and it's robust. We don't like the floats on the rear rotors for guys running these on the streets, putting miles on them because we've noticed a lot of people like rear brake. If you grab just rear brake, especially with a four piston caliper on your rear, you need a robust rotor because you're stopping 900 pounds, maybe a thousand pounds. If you have riders on there, it could be 1400 pounds of a bike with just one rotor. So that rotor needs to be robust. That's why we stay away from the full floating rotors in the rear. This rotor's thicker, it's tough, it's beefy, it can handle it. That's why we do these on our setups. Now we've gone over this before, but the radial brakes add fluid to your caliper. Also the way they're mounted to the bracketry, there's less flex in the mounting compared to an axial style that comes from the factory on a Harley. The radial brakes are pretty much on any competition motorcycle you see out there in the sport bike world. They come standard on all the big bag sport bikes. We put them on here. Welcome to Performance Baggers. Here's your brakes. On the front of this setup, what we have here is a four piston radial mounted Behringer Aerotech. It's the exact same caliper we talked about in the rear. The only difference is it has a little bit different mounting. The bolts are longer. They're spaced out more because these are 320 millimeter oversized rotors we run in the front. And the reason we like to run these rotors is the blade, which is the stainless steel part, that's called the blade of the rotor. And then the black part, which is the inner that bolts to the wheel, is the carrier of the rotor. Those are connected with the circles that we call bobbins, all right? On this exact rotor setup, you see six bobbins on it. You might not be able to see them all, but there's six of them. This rotor between the inner part and the outer part, so between your friction blade and your carrier, there's flats there right above your bobbin where when you hit your brakes and you grab that blade and push it backwards, it hits six flat spots on the carrier. And what that does is that takes the load in between the two pieces instead of the load being on the bobbins. We've seen other brake manufacturers 
that the load is on the bobbins and what happens is the inner part of the carrier gets worn because it's it's not flat it's not two flat surfaces hitting it's a round surface on a round surface and what it does is it rounds that top corner off of the inner carrier and as you get mileage on your rotor it gets looser and looser and looser now all rotors that are connected just with the bobbins that don't have the stops like this brake design is designed um, don't always wear that way some of the other manufacturers have put more bobbins and six in there some of them have 10 some of them have 12. now 12 bobbins are going to hold the carrier and the blade a lot better than if you had a rotor with six these ones are lighter because we have less bobbins there's less mass here and what we want to do on rotating mass is we want to reduce it that's part of performance bagger so lots of options out there this is our setup this is what we run we get a lot of comments from customers just on rotors if you just put a nice rotor on your bike that's a stock size the benefits are it's stronger it's not going to wear you really don't get extra stopping power until you move to better pads and a better caliper with possibly an oversized rotor that's when you really start to see the difference in front braking or rear braking to dive deeper into this Olean's inverted fork from Krauss it's real similar to what we talked about on the previous videos of your performance bagger starter setup or starter kit we had the GP suspension just like the GP, the left leg on this Owens handles the compression. So you have your adjustment on the top of the fork. It's easy to get to if you have a road glide. A street glide, it gets covered up, so not so easy. The right fork has your rebound. So you have your adjustment on the top for rebound. Both fork legs have the preload. And when you do the preload, whatever turn you do on the left, you're going to mimic it on the other fork so they're set up the same. Um, it allows the fork to work good. It allows the valving to be bigger, to have one setup control the compression and one setup the rebound. The biggest advantage of an inverted fork is instead of the bottom of your fork, like what comes on a factory Harley, your conventional fork, all the fluid is maintained in the bottom of the fork. Fluid's heavy. You pick up a gallon jug of milk, and I mean, shoot, you got five pounds there, roughly. And if you take that fluid from the bottom that's moving up and down and put it in the top of the fork where the fork's not moving, you're not moving that fluid anymore. So it lightens up the bottom, which would be your sprung weight. So anytime you can reduce your sprung weight, that's what you as a rider and the bike is gonna feel and be able to act better. The lighter your sprung weight is, the easier and the quicker the front end and the rear end can respond to bumps in the road. What you want for a performance suspension is you never want your wheel to lose contact with the road. So if you hit a bump, you don't want there to be a millisecond where your tire leaves the road just for a millisecond. Keep the tire plant on the road. That's where your traction is. That's where your feel is. The lighter it is, the quicker the suspension reacts, the more flawless it reacts to get there. Just feel smoother while it's doing it. So that's a big reason we move to the inverted forks. It's a big reason we go to the carbon fiber BST wheels. That's very important. Not only is that moving and it's inertia weight, those wheels are moving up and down when you're hitting bumps as well. So all that plays a factor this bike has a suspension the next thing this bike's getting and when it comes in we're going to do some fine tuning on this bike and the owner mr mattingly he's getting carbon fibers he doesn't know that yet but we're putting bsts on here eventually when we do the kraus handlebar setup on the top of these we always like to remount the gauges it cleans up the whole front end there's no more nacelle no more factory gauge holder we're relocating the gauges up on the bike right now this is a pair of 12 inch risers with the fly moto kickback which is about a two inch bar so it's a 14 inch bar setup um, after the customer rode it we actually changed him back to the 10 inch kickbacks with a two inch bar um, it just felt more comfortable for him we went on a couple demo rides we wanted to make sure everything is just fine-tuned we have a bunch of videos out there on mounting the risers to the top triple tree, which on this guy, you have a Wolf 1 triple tree, comes with the KRT front end. You can see the lock right here. You still maintain your fork lock. You're going to convert your bike over to a CVO now. So instead of having your ignition switch on your triple tree, it works just like a CVO. It's just your button on the right hand control. When we do the bars, we got to do lines that look correct. So on the 21s, something new from Harley is they've converted the clutch cable from a hydraulic clutch back to a cable which I prefer I like it when we do our clutch cables we don't do the two-piece like Harley comes from the factory 
That's a really nice setup. It's easier and cheaper to adapt a clutch line when it's two pieces. We want the stronger clutch line. We're running some performance clutches in our builds and we don't want there to be a failure. Less pieces in that clutch line, the more robust it can be. So we have custom made clutch lines made. It's one piece from your hand control all the way down to your transmission. That's just how we do it. You don't have to do it that way. We prefer it. We like nice ends on our lines. We get all custom lines for our builds when we have availability and the customer's willing to do the lines. On um, handlebars, most times when you go over 12 inches, you have to do the lines anyway. They just look nice, they're clean. We have different options for different color ends and we have options for different color stainless steel lines. We know, we know the gauges are up on this bike and you might not see your radio. Well, in some of these performance baggers, they don't want to see the radio. If you're looking down at your radio while you're riding, it's not good, all right? I don't know. I've been driving for a long time in my car, my truck. I've never had to look at my radio and know my screen. I just hit the next button, maybe the station or something. But man, Bluetooth your phone, put it on your handlebar. We can also put the gauges. We have so many videos out there. Check them out. Here's a couple different links to them. But we install them where you can see both and we marry them happily where you can see your gauges and your screen. Sometimes we can get where you can see almost all the screens. Sometimes you're seeing three quarters of your screen. Lots of different setups. If you want us to do your build, talk to either Aaron, myself, Jamie Lima, or Nick Zanola about what you're looking for out of the bar setup and we can help steer you. Krauss made it easy because these are modular handlebars with risers, with kickbacks, with pullback plates, with different style bars from your ERG bar to the fly bar to the ODI. So we have so many different options promise you we can get the setup you're looking for so you can have everything you want. If you're looking for a build or would like to get in contact with us, the easiest way to do it is to go to our website. Type in moonshineharley.com. Once again, moonshineharley.com. Go to our homepage. On the homepage, there's tabs at the top of the screen. The one in the middle says performance shop. When you highlight performance shop, a drop down will pop up. Click on the moonshine horsepower button. Basically, what we need to know is how to contact you. You need to fill out your name, your phone number, and then the bike. The more info you put on here, the more prepared we are when we call you. Your current engine, current parts on the bike, because we want to know what we can continue to use in the build you're looking for, or if you need everything. Um, what parts are going to be friendly to the build you're looking for. And then building goals, what are you looking for? What do you want us to accomplish with your bike? Put it in there. Also put the time frame, first available, you're three, four months out. Let us know how quickly you would like us to get to your build. And then hit that submit button, someone from our horsepower team will call you back. So it'll either be Aaron, Nick, myself, Jamie, or maybe MVO, Michael Van Orden. One of us four will call you back. Our schedule is Tuesday through Saturday. All the horsepower guys, Tuesday through Saturday. The shop is open seven days a week. And typically when you fill one of these out, it can be anywhere from 30 minutes to 48 hours to get back in contact with you. But we will. We appreciate the support. Please, if you haven't already, go to the subscribe button, click that guy. Also, you might want to click on the bell for notifications. Let's you know when we have a live event coming up on YouTube. Also lets you know when we're about to drop a brand new video. We appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for all the support. Have a good one. All the performance, 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 all, 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 performance, all of it. Baggers, baggers, fast baggers, fast baggers. Slow baggers suck, 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 suck.